welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would film a pretty different video from what I normally film. Today I'm going to be talking about growing up with strict Asian parents. So starting from who I am, I am a Chinese American. I have Chinese descent, but I was born in America. So a lot of people say ABC, American born Chinese. Um, that is a typical definition that kind of goes around. Um, both of my parents are Chinese. My mom is from Shanghai and my dad is from Hunan province. They immigrated to the US and they had me. So today I pretty much wanted to talk about how I was brought up with, um, you know, the term tiger parents. Number one, ever since I was a little kid, um, my parents always encouraged me to literally try everything. And of course I know that I was very privileged for my parents to be able to afford all these activities and I do recognize that, you know, not everyone has the opportunities that I had. And um, growing up in the Bay Area, I was very fortunate to have a lot of these opportunities very close by to me. So uh, when I was a little kid, I, you know, my parents pushed me into the water and told me like, oh, you're going to swimming class, you need to learn how to swim. And I also, went, um, uh, among swimming classes, I also did, had piano classes, I also had figure skating classes, I also had drawing and art classes. And of course, I also had dance class. So I did like hip hop dance and I also did like Chinese, like a cultural Chinese dance as well. So I was doing like all these things at once. And I also did ballet at the same time. So I literally kind of did like so many different kinds of different activities. And later on, my parents pushed me to do more sports like tennis. Of course, if you're Asian, you know, parents definitely have forced you to learn some sort of instrument. So stereotype is you either know violin or you either know piano and I happen to be um, the piano kid so I've been playing piano for 15 years of my life ever since I was three years old and now I'm currently 18 and um, I've been playing piano obviously not playing piano right now because if y'all have seen my nails I just got my nails did by the way and they're hella cute and they're hella bomb um, so I haven't been playing piano as of recently because obviously I go to college now and we don't really have a piano nearby but there is a piano in my sorority house um, so occasionally I do play there. I've literally been pia playing piano like my entire life, went to competitions, etc, etc. And of course I did the CM Merit Test, which is like the California Merit Test that we have here in um, California. And of course I went all the way to the advanced level. I was forced to play piano and of course I hated it. I hated practicing, I hated going to class, like the whole shebang. But it was only until I started to get really good, like maybe until like high school when I started to get really good at piano that was when I started to enjoy it and I actually kind of played like more for fun than for like I guess like it wasn't as torturous as it used to be right because every time I play piano I remember it's the practicing part that sucked right practicing always sucks and until you get really good at the whatever piece you're playing that's when you can really start to enjoy it now I play things like Liszt, Chopin, um, I played a couple Rachmaninoff pieces and I play Mozart and I play Beethoven right now. And I'm currently playing um, the Claire de Lune by uh, Debussy. So now I've grown to really love piano and it's definitely been something more of like a relaxing kind of thing for me, which is like really great. Number two, growing up as an Asian. Of course, we want to talk about academics, right? Um, if I got anything lower than A minus, I didn't get slapped, okay? I didn't get slapped, I didn't get beaten up, nothing crazy like that, but I definitely would get reprimanded for it. But um, in high school, your grades matter a lot because college obviously cares about your GPA. So throughout high school, I pretty much got all A's except for my senior year, second semester, in which I definitely slapped off a lot. And at that point, it didn't really matter because you kind of like already got into college. So for my family, we had really high expectations for me. So I was not allowed to go to any UC except for UC Berkeley and UCLA. And I did end up applying, obviously, to other UCs as well. Um, but for my parents, they said that I could basically either go to UC Berkeley or UCLA and in the end UCLA rejected me. And of course, my parents always wanted me to go to an Ivy League. Like that was sort of the dream for my parents, especially because they were immigrants and they never really had the opportunities that I was fortunate enough to have. So they sort of wanted to live vicariously through me and wanted me to sort of go to a really prestigious school, whatever my achievements were. I would never really get praised for it. My parents never ever praised me for getting an A. They would be like, oh, okay, like, that's like kind of expected, you know? And um, every time we would have like family gatherings or whatever, my parents would always, always, which leads me on to my third topic, comparisons. If you grew up in an Asian household, like how I did, 
Your success is never your success. Your success is for your parents to brag about to other parents. And when you're amongst family members or like friends, sometimes your parents would be like, oh yeah, why, they would talk to you like, oh yeah, why can't you be like that, that kid or whatever, whatever. How come that kid can get into Harvard, but you can't? Or like, how come that kid wins these, these, these awards, but you can't? Like, look at how amazing he or she is. And like, why aren't you like that, right? There was always this kind of, sort of like condescending, but not condescending because they compare you in a way to sort of show that, hey, you can do it too. They can do it, you can do it. It was never meant to like beat you down. And the way that my personality is, I never took comparisons as like, oh wow, like I suck, like I can never be like that. To me, having added pressure was a motivating source for me. And of course I understand not everyone's like that. Some people falter under pressure. I, however, thrive under pressure. When I finally got into Berkeley, got into the MBT program, my parents suddenly were like the proudest people ever, telling everyone, all their friends, oh, my daughter got into this program, blah, 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 only like 3% got accepted, right? Suddenly I'm receiving all this praise. But like in the process, before I even got into college, it was a lot, a lot of like, oh yeah, you need to like work harder, you need to beat your other competition, like you're not comparing against yourself, you need to compare against other people, which, you know, in school, they definitely teach you, oh yeah, just compare with yourself. Like, don't care about how other people are doing. And yes, there is definitely truth to that. I definitely believe that for some students, they don't um, do well when they find themselves being compared to others and they may feel worse about themselves, which definitely is like a person kind of thing, person to person kind of thing. But for me, I always wanted to know what other students got because it would give me a sense of where I am in the class. So after comparisons comes topic number four, restrictions. Growing up, my parents were extreme helicopter parents and very, very like hawk-eyed on me. Like for example, from elementary school to beginning of high school, I had a website on my computer, which was a desktop by the way, and there was a program on it called Net Nanny. And this program, my mom downloaded it. She would pay like $100 a year, I believe. And she would be able to track how long I've spent on each website. She would be able to block my access to the internet after a certain period of time. She would be able to track how long I've been on each website, which websites I go on. Literally know my every single move on my computer. And there was definitely parental restrictions, parental controls. Like my parents did not trust me at all. My mom never let me have a uh, smartphone until senior year, second semester. That was the first time I was ever allowed to have a smartphone. So throughout high school, all my friends had smartphones except for me. And of course I would feel FOMO and I'd be so jealous. So like sometimes I would like take an iPod touch or ask a friend, hey, can I have your old phone once they upgrade it? And I'll use their phone as like an iPhone, t iPod touch and like use Wi-Fi and stuff. And so I'd still be able to use Snapchat and Instagram and stuff. And then my mom would catch me having it. And then this woman, okay, God, I love my mom, okay? But she did things like when I was sleeping, she wanted to make sure that I would get good night's rest, right? And obviously phones are a distraction. So when I would be sleeping or if I were in bed, like at 2 a.m., she'd come to my room, reach under my pillows, feel under my bed to, to see if I had my phone, like if I snuck my phone to bed. And she would take it in the middle of the night. And then, so she would like prevent me from using my phone. She would also do nightly checks to make sure that I didn't have any electronics with me in bed and that I was like strictly sleeping. Which in hindsight, this is definitely a good practice in a sense because you know, it forces it forced me to sleep and electronics are definitely a huge distraction. And um, there's definitely been proven research that the way that like these electronics have like a blue light in the back, it uh, actually activates your circadian clock inside your body. So it prevents you from sleeping. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I think that's what it is. And then when it came to high school, um, my parents finally purchased my own laptop. But mind you, it didn't matter when I had a laptop or when I had my desktop back in middle school. My laptop was forced to be in the smack middle of the dining table so my parents could watch my every move. They would see, like, my mom would sometimes walk past and be like, oh, why did you click on that tab so fast? Like, what are you hiding? And then she would go on my tabs, check my history, see what tabs I'm on. And my bedroom was strictly meant just for sleeping. So I never really went to my room much. I know a lot of students, you know, you have like a desk in your bedroom and I was never allowed to do that. So I never like did homework in my bed or anything like that. I always did my homework in the dining table where my parents were working as well. So we were like all kind of like working together. Of course I had curfew. Like I was never allowed to like hang out with my friends after a certain point in time. So my parents and I, we would often go to the gym together and then pretty much curfew was like six o'clock. Basically, the moment dinner starts, you can't go out. So 
I was never allowed to go out. Um, and then when it came to senior year, second semester in uh, high school, obviously after I got into college, my parents were definitely a lot more relaxed with with me. So my curfew became midnight. And now that I'm in college and I come home, I don't really have a curfew as much. Um, I think it's more reasonable now. I, can, I should come home around like 2 a.m. It's really different because in college, you know, there's like no curfew. No one's monitoring you, right? You can literally go anytime you want. But when I come home, I have to like let my parents know like, hey, like I'm going out now. I'll be back around this time, so and so. So yeah, it's like definitely really different coming home. From freshman year to senior year, second semester of high school, I was never really allowed to like go shopping or like buy clothes or like do my makeup or do my hair. Nothing like that really. I was just very like studious, plain student, like not dressing up anything. The only time I started to like, you know, do my makeup, do my hair, started to like care more about my appearance was all towards senior year, second semester of high school. Um, and now coming on to my fifth topic, relationships. So my parents cared a lot about the kind of friends that I made. They would often question me like, oh yeah, like what ethnicity are they? What do their parents do? You know, like what kind of student are they? What kind of grades do they get? Are they honor student? Do they care about school? My parents definitely had a lot, a lot of input on like, you know, the kinds of friends that I was hanging out with. And you know, if you had strict Asian parents like I do, well, you know, Asian parents are so judgmental. My parents also never allowed me to have a boyfriend. Oh, boyfriend never allowed. In eighth grade to ninth grade, I had like a boyfriend, I guess. It was like a very on and off thing. Um, we ended up not working out and it was a very toxic relationship. But um, I would do things like I would sneak out of the house to like go see him. Or I'd like sneak out of my tutoring area to go see him and take the bus to go see him. Yeah, it was wild, honestly. You know, after that toxic relationship ended, blah, blah, blah. I didn't really like talk to guys that much. I never had a boyfriend in high school, pretty much. Um, never really talked to boys until second semester of senior year. So number six is substances. In my family, I was definitely not allowed to have substances at all. I was always taught like, you know, those things like mess up your brain, you don't need it. And so I was just brought up with that sort of environment. And so even to this day now, I don't do drugs at all. It's purely a choice that I've made myself. And I did try beer once and it was when I went to Germany uh, last summer and I tried a light beer and a dark beer at the uh, HB house. I believe it was in Munich. I tried light and dark beer and I took one sip and ugh, it was not for me. I definitely did not like the taste. Obviously, like I've had um, my some friends tell me that like, oh yeah, you're trying the wrong kind of beer. Like this kind of beer tastes like sparkling water. I don't know, honestly. But to me, like alcohol has just never been something of interest to me. I'm just a very like naturally like lit person and I don't really need alcohol to like get me in some mood. And it's really funny because sometimes when I go to college parties, people think that I'm drunk even though like I don't drink at all. Like I've never taken a sip. I always go to everything sober. I go to rave sober. I go to concert sober. I go to party sober. I'm just sober 24 seven and I'm just like a really like talkative, bubbly lit person. So yeah. And um, also I don't do any other hardcore drugs. Like I don't smoke weed. I don't take uh, E because it's just never really appealed to me. I don't see myself looking attractive doing it. In a sense, I'm thinking like, I don't want to try something and know that I could possibly get hooked onto it, even though people say it's not addictive. Everyone has different opinions. Some people say substances are addictive. Other people say they aren't. Ignorance is bliss. I'd rather just not try anything. So I just don't know how anything's like. So if I like it, then that would suck if I keep trying it. And if I don't like it, well, I just don't want to take the risk. So. I've just been a substance-free person and um, we'll go back to that at the end of college in four years from now to see if I stick to this goal of being substance-free. But for now, yes, I am 100% substance-free, never taken drugs in my entire life except for, you know, like a Tylenol here and there or like Advil when I have like, obviously like things that I have actual problems for, then I will like take pills, right? But you know, that's just me, my personal choice. So going to my seventh topic, sleepovers. So I was never allowed to pretty much have sleepovers with guys, uh, not even with girls. And if it were with girls, my parents would personally deliver me to the house and they would make sure that I would walk in. They'd have a communication with the um, sleepover hosties, hosties? The person who's hosting the sleepover, their parents, um, and make sure that everyone's, everything was fine, like no boys, nothing like that. Um, and I wasn't even allowed to have a sleepover until pretty much 
sophomore year of high school um, and it was always like a girls only and most of the time my parents would prefer me to host a sleepover rather than me going to someone else's house because they really didn't want me to like go to someone else's house they thought it would be bothersome and they just thought like you know sleepovers were just a waste of time and it just wasn't a thing that I was meant to do like I'm literally meant to like study my life away and of course my parents never allowed me to uh, go to parties of course not, like parties were totally not allowed. My parents also didn't want me to associate with the party kind of crowd, which I mean, funny enough, now that I'm in college, um, I do go to parties and they're fine with it because they know like parties is part of the college atmosphere. And um, you know, from hearing from my big and my grand big and their experiences in my sorority pretty much, uh, frat parties is more of like a freshman sophomore year thing and then junior year senior year people tend to go to like clubs and bars and stuff etc etc so we'll see how that goes and yeah that is pretty much all that i have for you guys today give the video a thumbs up if you guys can relate to anything that i've talked about today i hope you guys enjoyed the video so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye when you walk past that park near your apartment now Do you think about me? Do you think about me? Do you drive fast?